Hi everyone. To quote um, French prince and author um, François de la Rochefoucauld, and excuse my French pronunciation if you do speak French, to eat is a necessity, but to eat intelligently is an art. Um, I love that, that quote. It's one of my favorites because we don't always have it perfect. Um, but I'd like to take the liberty to add to that and to say to eat intelligently is also to eat knowledgeably, to know what you're eating or drinking, to know what you're consuming is such an important aspect of your health and well-being. And so I'd like to take this opportunity to try and sort of go through a little bit and try and give you some handles on knowing how to look at a food label, how to read a food label, and um, to get the best of it from there. Okay, so without going any further, if you're able to go and to try and go and find a label, something with a label, a cereal box, a yogurt tub, um, anything in your cupboard that would have a label on it. Of course, none of us have a packet of chips in our cupboard, so don't go, can't go for those, or a chocolate or anything. I'm just teasing. Anything that has a label on it, go and fetch it, bring it to bring it with you, and then you can go through it with me as I go as I go along and explain what everything means on these labels that we see. Okay, I'll give you a minute to do that. Labeling laws um, over the last decade have in South Africa have been phenomenally improved. So and our manufacturers have to really stick to quite a strict code. Um, and there's a lot that they have to put on, which is quite important and very helpful for us as a consumer. Okay, not every product has a label. Of course, our fresh fresh foods, fruits, vegetables, things like that don't have to come with labels. Um, and smaller packages, obviously homemade things, but the commercially produced products really do need a label. and they can be very, very helpful, okay, in make, helping us to make right choices. So the ingredients list, nutritional label, and nutritional information, and I'm going to go through that. On the other side here, on the sort of back end of it, it's usually some information about the product, maybe some extra information, usually, for example, if it's a cereal box, something you know important about eating a healthy breakfast, what does that include? This particular box has got some more information about the product, who should eat it, you know, so if you're an adult or if you're an active child, that kind of thing. Any endorsements, sort of stamped endorsements that, that need to be shown on the on the product should be somewhere on the box. On this side, they've got how to prepare it, and a lot of products will have that same thing. How to prepare the product, how to be able to use it in your daily life, and also any recommended serving sizes, okay? That will also come as part of the typical nutrition information. On the top, they might have some extra sort of, again, not an endorsement, but something that they, if they, if there's a claim, for example, if they're gluten-free, lactose-free, trans fatty acid-free, then that will be written somewhere. In this case, it's on top of the box. It may be on the side or the front of the box. Um, but it's something, for example, if you are, for whatever reason, staying away from gluten or staying away from lactose, then you'll be able to see straight away if it is free from that ingredient or not. Okay, now our labels are supposed to be true, so we should be able to, to believe them. But if you're not sure, there's always information up from, for, from the manufacturer or about the manufacturer. This one is underneath here. Um, Future Life have got a, a little promise statement there. Um, and then their, their contact information. So a website, a Facebook page, at least a telephone number or an email address that you can contact the manufacturers and ask them if you have a specific... Um, ingredients or specific thing that you need to be looking for or looking out for and you need to and you're not sure if it's on the box or not you can always ask you can contact the manufacturer and ask them okay or if you have any queries about that particular product of course also we need to be aware of perhaps it's a little bit longer for cereals and things but for other products our best before dates okay when it was manufactured and when it should be taken the best you know when it should be eaten or drunk best before date okay so that's a nice overall of the entire box a really a lot of useful information we can take from it in my next little see my next um clip i'm going to be going through a little bit more in detail about this typical nutrition information because for me that is a lot of information that we can take from there a lot of useful things that we can use to compare products and make better choices okay so let's let's end there for now and we'll see you in the next session Right guys, just to continue with our um, label reading session, I'm going to just have a look at this typical nutrition information here. Okay, and I'm going to try and keep it 
as simple as I can. So what we're looking at here is, for example, like our energy, carbohydrates, fats, sugar, salt, those kinds of things that we're looking at. And it depends what you're looking for. I'm going to try and touch on a few of them, but you need to decide. It depends on what you need to maximize, what you need to minimize to know what you're looking for. Okay, so for example, maximizing fiber intake. We want to make sure we get enough fiber or minimizing sugar and fat. Okay, depending on, on where you're at. But just to give you an idea, lovely to be able to compare products. If you look at your nutrition, nutrition information here, there's two columns. One that's rate that's listed as per 100 grams of product and one that is listed per serving. Okay, now the, the manufacturer will usually stipulate a serving size. In this case, it's 50 grams per serving. And then you can look at per serving, all right, and see how much, how much you're getting in an actual serving of, okay, in this case, Future Life cereal. So just the first one is, is energy. Now remember in South Africa, we use kilojoules for energy. Um, you may also see another column that says calories or kilocalories, often used interchangeably. Um, but kilojoules is the one that we use. And remember, for a main meal, we try not to go we, it's somewhere between 1,200 to 2,100 kilojoules for a main meal, um, depending on gender, exercise level, activity level, all of that. So, and um, especially, and then a snack between 500 and 750 kilojoules if you're looking at snacks. So, energy is there. And again, yeah, use that per 100 grams to then be able to compare products and say, okay. I'm getting more energy per 100 grams here or less energy per 100 grams here, then you can choose accordingly. The other, the next thing to look at is our carbohydrates and usually listed as glycemic carbohydrates. That's the total amount of carbohydrates that your body can use and access for energy. And it includes the sugar, both natural and added sugars. Okay, which is why there's often the next line states how much is, how much of that is actually sugar. Okay, so just a reminder, remember if for every five grams of sugar, that's one teaspoon. So if it says 15 grams of sugar, that's three teaspoons per portion or per 100 grams, whatever you're looking at. Um, and we want less than a teaspoon per 100 grams to, for it to be a low sugar product. Okay, doesn't mean you can never eat it, just means that it's low sugar product. In saying that, having a little bit of you know, your natural sugars, especially the ones that come from your fruits and your, your and your dairy, um, a little bit of the whole grains or your vegetables, um, those sugars, you know, to have in your diet is, is usually fine. It's the added ones we do need to be careful of. But even a small amount of added sugar is, is okay. Um, but we try not to do it more than about, have more than about six teaspoons of added sugar a day. And you'd be surprised as how quickly it adds up. I did do a little, um, a little video on sugar. So maybe have a look back at, at that just for some little tips about the sugar content. But for us, for, for now, to be able to identify that for every five grams of sugar, it's a teaspoon. Okay, so you can work out how many teaspoons you're getting per portion. Okay. In terms of fat, our total fat, FAT, less than three grams per 100 moles or 100 grams of product is ideal, what is ideally a low fat product. Anything more than 20 means it's possibly a high fat product and we need to be careful of it. Again, as we also need to look at, it's not just the total fat, but the type of fat that's important. So if you're looking at the types of fat, as long as our saturated fats are less and the unsaturated fats are a little bit more, then we're sitting in a good position. Remember, cholesterol is also a type of fat and they'll list cholesterol and this product is zero cholesterol, which is great. Okay. Um, just quickly hitting back onto that, just rewinding a little bit onto the sugar part. Remember with that kind of thing, because I'm looking here, Future Life says it's one and a half teaspoons of sugar per portion, which most, you know, for some people that might be a little bit lot, it might be a little bit lot, it might be a little, quite a bit. But remember, Future Life has also got a high fiber content. It also is re relative to the portion that you eat, um, because yeah, it's 15 15 grams per hundred, so it's more than what we would consider a low sugar product. However, the portion size and the fiber content helps so that the, this sugar in here doesn't cause a spike in your blood sugar levels, okay? And that would be true for other cereals, for example. So sugar fats, if we look at your fiber, we want to know if a fiber is high product, is a high fiber product, 
more than six grams per hundred is a high fiber. And then salt, remember per hundred grams, we don't, anything more than 600 is, is high, okay, in salt. And we need to just be careful, particularly if you have blood pressure problems. So that's, again, a very individually based thing to look for. Your vitamins and minerals will be listed here. And again, depending on what you want or you don't want. And then you can have a look with those, particularly is the percentage NRV, your nutrient reference value, which is a list of, um, it's usually with vitamins and minerals. It's an amount that has been scientifically calculated um, at the moment that is going to be enough to prevent a disease of a certain disease of that vitamin or mineral if it's if you're deficient of it. Um, so your daily intake. So let's take vitamin C for example. Um, there's a certain amount of vitamin C that you need as a healthy individual. Um, anything from aged four up as a healthy individual to not be deficient in vitamin C. And the NRV, and that would be the nutrient reference value. The percentage on the side is how much of that of that vitamin you're getting. How much are your daily requirement you're getting. So along this side, you're getting 50% of your daily requirement for that particular vitamin. So in this case, vitamin C is one of them. 50% of your vitamin C requirements for the day is found in a portion of future life. And the same is true for in this case, your vitamin A, your B, your vitamin D, E, H, and K. 50% of your daily requirements for those particular vitamins are met in a portion of future life, which is quite significant, okay? And so you can look at that percentage value on other cereals as well, which is also nice to know that half your vitamins are done, or most of your vitamins are done with a morning portion of breakfast cereal, depending on what it is, okay? So hopefully that helps a little bit. Also remember to look out for some of your um, health logos. Um, Let's see this one, for example, the Heart Foundation, the Cancer Association, the Low GI Foundation, and um, give us an indication of a product that might be a healthier choice. So have a look, go and compare some labels, practice reading them, have a look at them. I'll send you some links to help you to go through it all that you don't have to remember everything from what I said. Um, and that will give you some, hopefully give you some good handles, making better choices, more informed choices as we go forward. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.